All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to some more of the house in Fata Morgana. Thank you all for the love and support you showed this series. It's always appreciated. And guys, it it's always ceases, it never ceases to amaze me how much this visual novel tends to surprise me because once more we are hit with another <laughs> surprising part of the story and. I'm not gonna get into it obviously guys I want you guys to see for yourselves but it's always it's always amazing and I love it I love where it's going because like I will never know how this is gonna end now like I don't know what's to come but we're gonna find out together and we're gonna see it through so I hope you all continue to enjoy watching now let's get to it all right and we're back why what, what were you doing out there Didier how am I gross, Amy? It's not real. It's all a bunch of lies. This entire house is nothing but a fraud. None of it was ever real. The family gatherings, Amy's smiles, Didier's kindness, George's... What about George's? Did he agree to the marriage knowing about them? What the hell are they thinking? You wanna know who's really disgusting? Man. God damn it. I will not cry. I will not cry. I can't let myself. Girls cry. Tears are for girls, not for me. I bit down hard on my lip, wrapped myself in my sheets, and pressed my hands hard over my ears. Squeezed my eyes shut as tight as I could manage. I tried to get away from the things I had seen. Images of them embracing in the night threatened to float back to the surface, but I shook my head, casting them off. Praying I wouldn't have any nightmares. I drifted off to sleep. The next day, I awoke with a terrible fever. I hovered in a sweltering wave of heat, unable to tell dream and reality apart, listening to a seemingly endless stream of cracking noises. The sounds were coming from inside my body. I thought I was falling apart. Mother was horribly worried. I had never been the most healthy child, but I had never fallen this ill either. I couldn't get out of bed. My voice was raspy like an old woman's. I was genuinely afraid I would wither away and die. Mother called in the doctor after the doctor to see me, but they all said it was the flu. That bodily pain was common with a fever. While there was a doctor in the house, Mother was able to remain relatively calm. But once they were gone, the anxiety came back. She stayed with me day and night, even foregoing sleep. Her hands gripped mine. They held me fast. She had her head bowed as if in prayer. Don't worry. It'll be alright, Michelle. God is watching over you. He will protect you. You are his child. You are his angel sent to earth. He will not forsake you. The doctor said it's just a flu. Though her words seemed to be directed at me, there was a vacantness in her voice as if they were really for herself. For so long she had wanted a daughter. I couldn't understand her fixation. But seeing her there through my cloudy eyes, I wanted to apologize for ever thinking spending time with her was agonizing. How are you feeling? Your mother's here for you, don't worry. But the only sound that came from my mouth was a faint gasp. I drifted in and out of sleep, mother's hand wrapped around my own. And I had numerous dreams. In my dreams, I was a man. In my dreams, I was Didier and I was George's. In my dreams, I fell in love with Amy. And in my dreams, I loved her. You're disgusting. But with one word, the dreams twisted into nightmares. My body was torn into fleshy chunks, and I sunk into the darkness. Several days later, my fever was gone, like I had never been there. However... Gah! What the... My voice did not recover. And when I attempted to climb from my bed, the murderous pain in my joints came rushing back. Instead of my feet, I landed on my face. Ha! <laughs> my voice was unbelievably deep. Gah! Ah! And the pain only got worse. Every time I took a breath, it felt like someone hammering a spike into the back of my neck. It felt like my body was falling apart, like my dreams were becoming reality. 
Michelle! Michelle! When Mother scrambled into my chambers, I remembered the time she had spent at my bedside, and a wave of relief came over me. I reached my hand out in a show of vulnerability, but she didn't take it. She couldn't take it. M mother What? What's wrong with your voice, Michelle? Ah, uh, uh, I, I see. You're still not feeling well, are you, Michelle? A look of restrained fear on her face, Mother stepped toward me, placing her hand on my forehead. Her palm felt hot against my skin. You don't have a fever. But I hurt all over. My joints. Y you're still sick, Michelle. But don't worry, you'll be fine in no time. Now back to bed with you. Y you're a girl. You're a girl, so you shouldn't be sitting on the floor. It's bad for your back. As Mother repeated the phrase, you're a girl, again and again, that nagging sense that something wasn't quite right grew more distinct. Was I really sick? Did, did this ailment of hers turn her into a guy? <laughs> was this actually my voice now? And if it was, what was I turning into? My voice was well, certainly not a girl's voice. My voice never went back to normal though, so mother ordered me to remain in my room. I hadn't recovered yet, and so long as I was sick, I couldn't be let out. Again, something felt wrong about her calling it a sickness, but I had no evidence to the contrary. I had no way to know I wouldn't get others sick if I exposed them, as she claimed, so I had no choice but to do as she said. In time, mother too stopped visiting me, and the only people I saw were servants. They did their jobs but refused to look me in the eye. No one else came to see me though. Not Amy, Didier, or George's. One month passed, then two, then three. Occasionally, the pain in my joints would withdraw. At other times, it would worsen. Whenever I would drift off to sleep, I would hear the sound of my own joints creaking. I would dream of a woman standing in the courtyard, her soft chestnut hair fluttering in the wind as she twirled to face me, a smile on her face and her breast exposed. One day after around six months of servants refusing to make eye contact, I stopped one and made a request to have a mirror brought to my room. While he didn't acknowledge me, the next day I had my mirror. By that point, I was fairly certain I knew what was happening to my body. I had no clothes to wear because none of the multicolored dresses hanging in my wardrobe fit me anymore. Pulling the heavy red cloth and covering the mirror aside, my completely naked body came into view. Huh. Something resembling a mix of a chuckle and a sigh of pity spilled from my lips. This is me. Six months. After only six months' time, I could hardly recognize myself. Extending my hand for the mirror, I traced the outline of my bony reflection. My shoulders lacked mother's curves and my skin Amy's sheen. I was pale and haggard, but structurally, I looked like my brothers. Obviously being younger than them and not as active, my muscles lacked any kind of strength but I would have bad an eye if I saw myself holding a sword. I was, f I was a full head taller than I had been six months earlier, and I felt an odd certainty that I wasn't done growing either. Staring at myself in the mirror, I traced my name across the surface. Michelle. Don't need the last two. Mikkel. Okay. Or it could be pronounced as Michael, I guess. I don't know. I've been calling him Mikkel this whole time, so. So he did. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Huh. For the first time in my life, I liked my name. I still didn't think an angel's name suited me one bit. But it was staggering how different it felt now, even if it sounded exactly the same. Those last two letters changed the meaning entirely, turning it from a girl's name to a boy's name. This. Now this makes sense. Everything was falling into place. My admiration for Didier, the envy I had for my brother's bodies, the feelings I had for Amy, the indecent dreams I had been having. I... I was always male. <laughs> oh man. So, wait. Wait, what? If he says he was always male, I'm, I'm confused. No, he was... We'll, we'll keep going. 
I cackled like a fool for the first time in my life. I laughed so hard at the sight of myself my stomach hurt. It was the first glimmer of light I had seen in this locker room for far too long. This was what I was supposed to look like. My life up to until six months ago constricted and uncomfortable. My life as a girl was all a lie. <laughs> no one could possibly look at me and call me an angel. I was always a boy, but I had been told I was a girl, forced to act like one. Of course that wouldn't feel right. They needed to know. I couldn't be the only one who understood. Everyone in this house needed to. Ha! <laughs> ha! Fueled by this one desire, I wrapped a sheet over my shoulders and threw open my door. Oh, this is why he got kicked out, I guess. It seemed ridiculous how long I had followed Mother's instructions and remained cooped up in my room. And now I felt fantastic. If there truly was a God in heaven, then this, this change within me was his answer to my prayers. A man serving carrying a tray of food did a double take as I passed him. The farther I proceeded through the corridors, the more eyes I felt on me. The midday sun shone obnoxiously bright through the windows. But now, with its piercing radiation illuminating my proper self, I felt an odd affection for the light. I could hear the family gathered in the great hall, everyone but me. The dear's voice complained about the simple meals the church provided, but his pride came through in his laughter. Wow, this family really sucks. They didn't even visit him. The mother, I understand. But everyone else, really? George's voice playfully bragged about life at the royal court. You see this? They're, they're talking as if everything's okay and, like, they never had uh, another sibling. Father's voice informed everyone his investments had borne fruit, and with the money, he had just purchased several new estates. Mother's voice was distinctly less bright than the rest of the family. She gave vague, empty indications she was listening, though mostly it stayed out of the conversation. Amy's voice sang her praises for George as her beloved husband. Never mind the fact she was sleeping with Didier. We don't know that, though. It was all a facade. A mere shadow of a family. It's a shame Michelle couldn't be here. Then we would have everyone. I was there. I was right there. I hadn't gone anywhere. You had just locked me in my room. I hope she recovers soon. I was never sick at all. The child you called Michelle was actually your son. That was all there was to it. Huh? What? Everyone's, everyone's gaze is concentrated on me. I gave them all a quick glance, and then with my deepened voice I said, I'm cured. I was cured six months ago. Who, who are you? Surely you haven't forgotten my face, have you? Father? M michelle Michelle? This boy is Michelle? A wave of chatter spread through the hall. Mother went pale. Father objected. Didier stared. George gaped. Amy watched cautiously, fear in her eyes. What a farce. They were the ones who had wrongly decided I was a girl. But what's going on? Someone tell me, what is the meaning of this? You were dressing your son up like a girl, mother? I... I assumed he was a girl. Otherwise, I wouldn't have... put my hands on him like that. You lied to me. I would never have agreed to it had I known. M no, you're wrong. She's... Michelle is my daughter. You called that a girl? All these months I was worried because you said he was sick. But that was all a lie. You couldn't pass him off as a girl anymore, so you locked him up in his room. Is that what this is? And you, you could have just stayed there. What possessed you to show yourself now? Wow. Wow. W mm. Stop that. Don't look at me. Don't give me that look. You said you can tell what's going through my mind, didn't you? What? Then you should know exactly how I feel about you right now. Don't be so damn full of yourself. I have no interest in a whore like you. <laughs> Wow. So why don't you go cry into Didier's arms? You... You! What? What? Huh? What are you talking about? Why Didier? Why not me? What? Hey, anyone want to explain that for me? What had once been a nice family meal was now utter chaos. For the briefest moment, I felt sorry for George's button, but that whisked away almost immediately. There was a crash from the table, and the dishes fell shattering against the floor. Cursed. A chilling darkness oozed from her voice. She's cursed. She was my daughter. I saw it with my own eyes. 
I gave birth to her. She was a girl. Michelle was a girl. A malevolent curse has been placed on her. When Mother lifted her head, I had difficulty believing that was the same woman who had sat by my bedside as I lay sick, sacrificing sleep to care for me. Her hair was frazzled. Her hair was a frazzled mess and deep creases covered her face. Restrain her. Don't worry in her room and lock the door. She's a girl. A girl. She was a girl, I swear it. Open your eyes. Do I sound like a girl? Do I look anything like a girl? Mother's cry sent me into a frenzy. I ripped the sheets off my shoulders, throwing it to the floor. I am not a girl! And shouted. Ah! Ah! ah. Restrain her! Please! Someone restrain her! Fear reigned in the great hall. But then several moments of icy silence were broken by a muttering that shocked me as much as anyone else. You're not a boy. Or a girl. Well, what on earth are you? You're an abomination. You're not a boy. You're an abomination. I'm... what? I had seen myself in the mirror. I was undoubtedly male. Lacking in strength though they may have been, I had visible muscles. My chest was flat, and I was taller than a girl should be. My voice was deep, and I had an obvious lump in the middle of my throat. I was male. I had to be male. What else could I be? So why? Why was Amy looking at me like some kind of strange creature? A chill ran down my spine, and suddenly I found myself deeply uncomfortable being so exposed. There's nothing there. You've got nothing there. Nothing there? I didn't understand what she was talking about. Unable to press further, I fell silent, at which point several servants burst into the great hall and restrained me. She's a girl. She's my daughter. Mother, seemingly in a mad daze, just repeated the same thing over and over. She was a girl! As Mother wailed, she wandered off somewhere. Father stood there in silence. Amy stared at me with disgust in her eyes. Georges was still in a panic, and Delius clenched his fist. Eventually, I started regaining my composure, which is when I realized I had made a mistake. My sickness has been made into a curse. I was once more caged up in my room. In addition to the door being locked from the outside, the windows were boarded over so no one could see in. Now, this family is messed up, man. Locked them up? Leaving me in perpetual darkness. I received no visitors except the servants, and again, none of them would look me in the eye. Every day was the same, day in and day out, day in and day out. The only time the routine changed was when, on occasion, a servant would arrive being, bearing a letter. It was my mother's handwriting on the parchment. We lived in the same house and she refused to show herself before me. I had no choice but to respond to her letters. She demanded I speak like a girl and I didn't have the strength to defy her. There was a constant sense of urgency to her letters, like she might fall apart completely at any second. And so, I did as she said. I sent each letter Michelle. The female name she she, bestowed, she bestowed upon me at birth, which I so despised. Every time I used that name, I felt like I was denying my own identity. On paper, she expressed her concern for me, but that concern only served to cause me more pain. So every time I looked, I took up my quill. My hands trembled. Mother, prayed daily that my curse might one day be broken. Am I cursed? Is that why my body changed? Was it not? Because I was male? There's nothing there. What did she mean by that? Why did she look at me the way she did? How am I an abomination? Why? I don't understand. The way I see it is there are, uh, what do you call that? I read stories where angels don't have um, any reproductive organs. So they are considered, you know, male or female or oh, what was it uh what was the term for it i forgot um oh man it's it's it's, it's at the tip of my tongue and i forgot the term but i think that's that's the kind of uh, uh what you call the uh, not condition but that's the kind the kind of thing he has right now someone anyone please tell me someone please I have brought your supper. I'll be back shortly to retrieve your dishes. I'll be going then. Wait. 
What? Wait a minute. Y yes What do you need, Michelle? Are you a man or a woman? Pardon? Which are you? I am exactly what I appear to be. Which are you? I am a man. If that is all, I will be going now. Clothes. Off. What? Take your clothes off right now. Everything, even your underclothes. What? Surely you jest, Michelle. I am very serious. I... I could not possibly... Why not? I... I could not expose myself. I ordered you to take off your clothes. You mean to humiliate me? I beg you, please reconsider. What are you? You're a servant of the Bollinger estate. And what am I? I am a child of the Bollinger family. I may be locked up in prison in this room, but that doesn't make you any less my servant. Am I wrong? Um... Clothes off. Michelle. I... I ordered you to take your clothes off. <laughs> Not even the tiny sliver of guilt arose in my conscience. I felt no shame in what I was doing. All that mattered to me was figuring out what Amy had meant. I wanted to find the truth, not knowing I would have been better off in the dark. His face twisted in humiliation, the servant undressed before me. The dim candle light the, the dim candle light, the man's body was shaped almost like a rectangle. At a glance, he didn't appear much different than me. A second later though, I found my answer. I found the one crucial thing he had that I didn't. Why? My lower body lacked that part. That made a man a man. Uh, are you satisfied, Michelle? It was it was then that I finally learned what a man's body was supposed to look like. I'm begging you, please allow me to dress. It would be an unbearable shame to remain unclothed any longer. Before the young Baldwin daughter. Daughter? You still insist on calling me a damn girl? Look at these shoulders, my chest. Listen to my voice. How can you possibly think any of that belongs to a girl? But, but how you appear d does not... There was a distinct look of fear in the manservant's eyes, not out of respect for our differences in rank, but out of disgust for this incomprehensible thing standing there before him, those trembling eyes, and the reality dangling there before me, blew the lid once more, off everything I had been holding back. Without that, you would be no different than me. What? Everything else, everything else is all the same, so why? Why does it make such a difference? That you have one and I don't. M Michelle? I... I am a man. I'm a man just like you. I'm no one's daughter. <laughs> and if you still insist we're not the same, then I'll make you like me. Oh, oh. No, don't, don't go there. Don't go there, dude. You're a good guy. Don't, don't, don't push it. Without that, you're no different than me. It was a mix of dread and panic that pushed me over the edge. In order to keep myself afloat, I decided to bring another pain. Please don't do this, Michelle. Yeah, please don't do it, Mikel. Don't do it, please. <laughs> In a blind frenzy, hardly even aware of what I was doing, just riding the current of my erupting emotions. Oh my god. I swiped the knife off the tray the man had brought, knocked him down, and climbed onto him. Oh no. No, no, no. I'll get rid of it. I'll make you the same. No. Oh my god. <laughs> don't do it, Mikel. Oh. Without it, you'll be just like me. Get, get, get off me, please! Someone, help! I'll make you just like me. Get in here! Someone! Anyone! M Michelle! She's delirious! Through the fog of hysteria, I suddenly realized I was surrounded by several servants and the next thing I knew, I was on the floor beneath them. There were as many, if not more, of them then when I had made the scene in the Great Hall. A dozen man men servants stared down at me, their eyes filled with fear and revulsion. And in the shadow in the shadows beyond the crowd I saw Mother looking in on me with vacant eyes. Mother Mother, why? Why will you only speak to me through letters? Why do you say I'm cursed? Oh, which also reminds me by the way, 
the whole mom speaking through him through letters only is, you know, reminiscent of the third story with Jacopo and uh, the white-haired girl because the white-haired girl would only speak to was it yeah the white-haired girl would only speak to Jacopo through letters after she, he kicked her out into the into the other cabin the other basement I forgot where she, where he locked her up but that's another spot that's probably where he, uh, the story came from too. Why do you say I'm cursed? Mother, I'm... I'm male. I was always male. Tell me that I am, mother. Let me out of here, please. I'm not delirious. My head is perfectly clear. I'm normal. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm... I'm not cursed. Mother, say something! Mother! I really feel bad for Mikkel, though. After that, I was shut in my room again, and even the servants stopped coming. I pushed and I shoved and I pulled and I pounded with all my strength, but the door and windows didn't budge. A day passed and then another. With no food or water, I started fearing death was upon me. I'd had no idea how miserable it was to go so long without water. My throat was dry and cracked and it felt like it was on fire, making breathing difficult. Two days, 48 long hours. I felt like I was going to lose my mind. In just two days, my skin stretched tight across my bones, looking hard and dry in, in the soft candlelight. Water. I need water. Someone, please, give me water. Why won't anyone bring me any? Why? Ugh. My family had abandoned me and were leaving me to die in this room. When I realized that, I broke into uncontrollable shaking. The helplessness threatened to suffocate me. Fear of death turned to panic, which only scrambled my already confused mind further. I grabbed the chair, swinging it at the window, at the door. But all my attempts ended in crushing failure. Anyone! I called at the door, begging for help. Someone, open the door! Anyone! Water! I need water! One drop! That's all I need. I'm gonna die in here. Someone. Anyone. Mother. Father. Didier. Georges. Someone open the door, please. Help me. Someone. I need water. My throat hurts. It burns. I'm... I'm so weak. Someone. Water. Didier. Georges. Ah, anyone! But not a single soul came to the door. With no food or water, the third day came and went, and then the fourth. By that point, I was expectedly devoid of any sense of dignity, and I sat there covered in all manner of human filth. As my body quickly wasted away, still I clung to the vain hope that someone would open that door. It was all I had. Occasionally, I would hear footsteps. Whenever I did, I mustered up that what meager strength I had left to bang on the door. Whoever's there, please, open the door. I'm begging you, someone. But my pleas fell on Death's ears. Though they didn't respond to me, I could hear the Abigails muttering to one another in the corridor. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. I wonder what's gotten to Lady Michelle. They say she was cursed. Maybe she sold her soul to the devil. How dreadful. We should stay away from that door, if we don't want to be cursed too. I... I am not... I am not cursed. I did not sell my soul... to the devil. I'm kind of scared. I might have to find work somewhere else. Gotta make sure we stay away from that door. Why do you think I'm cursed? I... I never did anything wrong. Lady Michelle has lost her mind. She's deranged. I'm scared even thinking about her. I am not deranged. My mind is perfectly fine. Well, I'll wait to the point you almost, you know, <laughs> neutered a, one of your manservants. But yeah, you're, you're sound of mind right now. She's right crazy. She's right mad. No, I'm not. I'm perfectly normal. <laughs> Ah, ah, ah! Someone, 
someone please get me out of here? The fifth and then the sixth day passed, and by that point I was hovering over on death's brink. I lacked even the willpower to hold myself up against the door, so I simply lay on the cold floor waiting for the end. I felt no sorrow, no anger, no despair, nothing. I had been sucked completely dry. I couldn't even compose a coherent thought, which is why the door I had so yearned to open actually did. And someone stepped inside standing over me, I was unable to process it. My god, what a mess. Hey, are you still alive? Ah, uh, uh, Well, look at that. I was afraid you'd be dead. It was Amy's voice. I'm sorry, really. I don't like where this is going, guys. But I'm going to have to end the video here for today. Thank you all for watching. When we come back, we're going to hopefully see the conclusion of... Mikkel's story. So, thank you all for watching, and until the next one.